I'm at the shipper near Thunder Bay uh, auction ended uh, about one one month ago so they moved the stuff that hasn't been picked up in here so we see uh, damaged uh, Ford F-250 with a bad fender there's a little SUV in there Chevy and then that stuff not sure about this probably this was for sale as well and this is my 330 BL uh, 99 or 97 so it has a huge bucket I don't like it I hope I'll be able to uh, well hold on the the most important thing is that oh okay as long as the bucket is less than is not as wide as the tracks because that has been my experience you know like when the bucket some of these buckets are like they, they over here you know I cannot then the boom is too tall and so it looks like they cleaned uh, the tracks you know uh, probably for the for the auction I don't know so I just need to no big deal just remove that wood and of course there's some stuff in here that uh, customs might object to but 330 bl and the guy says uh they changed this like i guess because the electronics does not work anymore so this is the throttle you know this is the throttle and so the first thing i did first i wanted to load outside but then yeah uh, i realized you know what even though it's not soggy but i don't want to drive this thing on the ground unless i really have to if that and so i decided i asked the guy if it's okay oh by the way the guy who greeted me here he's uh, one of my fans raymond thank you raymond for watching my videos and he jumped with me in the truck showed me where this thing sit, uh, was sitting because it's there's a highway in there he says you can see it from the highway but the only entrance is through the main entrance to this property it's kind of like a private property that they they rent out to the auction people and i said geez you guys have so much land and he says this is what northern ontario he says is all about land is cheap and so these guys i don't know how much how much acres they have like square miles here i don't know i don't know 20 30 acres 40 50 like there's equipment everywhere but this is pretty much all for i'm guessing storage and uh, i think all they do is well they do something over there i see they uh, they have some of those uh, big screen machines so they do i think probably that's their main business uh, they sift through sand and, and rock probably that's what they sell uh, like a small gravel pit or something sand pit and then they rent the rest very smart a rent that's where the money is so one of these days captain sergey is going to buy something similar maybe a bit bigger uh, <laughs> anyway so what i did because i was running with uh, two axles in the air right uh, i had to put down the first the axle one axle three and over there in the in the distance that's why i was parked i found a big board which was beautiful you know i was able to put that board right under these tires and then i moved out off and i put it under this tire so i released the chains opened the um the taps for airbags and uh, where are they here did they did they open them sometimes i forget hold on it was this one yeah i forgot on the first one and i'm like why is the airbags still empty okay yeah see over here i remembered so this is closed this is open so now the air goes in and then also one more thing i did i um you know originally i put in the um these shims in here on this side under this pin and they were all going crooked and trying to escape you know sitting at like a 30 degree angle and so i played with the suspension on this last axle and i was able to release the pressure and this was of course sitting there so i put them under the uh, head of the bolt so that's how they're supposed to be 
so now this is much better it's it's no longer uh, putting pressure on the pin I mean on this so anyway all we have to do now and here I have these the blue ones everything is good you see that's how they should go the um, the shims should go under the head of the pin that's the best uh, so these are left alone you know well except on that one I put it from the outside but that does not matter so all right so the axles are in the air the pins are corrected and this thing has super narrow tracks I'm gonna check but I don't think I need to use any outrigger boards but I'm gonna use this one for just put it in here use it for the bucket but right now what I got to do is I got to flip this thing and uh, I'll have to correct see once you start flipping this will start turning and well this should be okay but you see right now they are under pressure and this one almost came out but there's a pin in there so I need to hit this one in and I need to turn it because that's the blocker over here right so but once it starts turning we'll see what happens once I lift it so for now I just need to bring the machine closer and we checked it starts so I'm gonna bring it closer I'm gonna grab a chain and put a chain on the D-ring and just use the bucket to flip it down so that's what we're doing
almost done, boys and girls. So now we just need to put the... Where are they? Where are they hiding? We have to put these. so much easier okay now you see this so I got two kingpin positions right that's my main neck so 101 and I forget 83 86 so now it's always a good idea to remove it like that but don't try this at home this weighs about 50 pounds no I'm just kidding but it just sits there under the force of gravity but if I don't remove it it might hit the, the thing the frame because this one has its own uh, has its own uh, kingpin over here underneath so now you see this has this all right so yeah we gotta they're always connected oh hold on it's been a while since i since i but you know similar principle so yeah these just sit here This time I'm gonna remember to move my fifth wheel. But that's pretty. Yeah, you see. So now instead of 101, my neck is uh, like the swing radius became 124, which is super useful even for this machine, 80, 80,000 pounds. So this way I can move my fifth wheel. So yeah, once I hook up to it, I'll release the I'll release the lock on the fifth wheel, and I'll move this spot somewhere here by about two feet.
So that's how it's gonna sit on the on the truck. So that's the highest, like the smallest angle between the arm and the boom, or the stick, whatever you call it, and digger and arm. And so then we're just gonna lower the entire assembly. All right, let's do the thing with the with the neck. So yeah, I'm gonna move the fifth wheel, hook up the hoses, and then we're gonna take the neck away, and then we can load.
so it was it was pretty tall but i managed to hook up so now i just i have to drain the air on the truck because i hooked up normally i take the air out but this time it was tall right so i managed to hook up everything went in but i have to drain the air otherwise this thing will hit once i start moving the fifth wheel One thing that uh, is this, I make sure, is it this? if your truck is a little bit at an angle, because Fontaine gives you these, you have to be really accurate, you see, and I'm a bit at an angle, because over here, you have this space, over there you have that space, so, but it works, otherwise this thing goes in here, not good. So now we can just disconnect all this stuff here. hide it in this little pocket so that the machine does not damage it and of course the uh, the handle is locked there's pressure on it usually you either have to raise the trailer a little bit or drop it Oh, see now it went went out. So now we can lower it. So the cylinders go in, and that's as far as they can go. Is that black uh, black paint over there? That's it. So now we put this down. 
So that this thing doesn't drag on the ground. That should be okay. And I really don't like these ramps. It's one extra step, you know? I'd rather have a trailer like this with no ramps and then they get rusty. Like, check this out, what's, what's gonna happen now? See? gonna be using this for the first time see if it helps any this guy you see what happens this is what happens when you have track machines they just eat at your metal all right and I don't know yet if one one timber will be enough. I just uh, don't want the, the boom to hit that so all right so let's go disconnect and position the machine straight and we'll go and we'll go from there something was making noise in there but I don't see any oh some girl is asking me what are you when are you available to meet She wants to buy my uh, LG phone. I have an ad online. So still <laughs> trying to get used to my uh, huge iPhone 11 Pro and what the? I'm a popular guy. Who is this? A Robert. Robert. Oh, he sent me a sound uh, bite sound message okay i don't have time for that okay somebody's offering me a load louisville kentucky to new york delete cannot do loads inside us so basically uh this thing has a tiny connector right so it's not a usb-c it's a, i think it's called lightning lightning connector so it's smaller so i don't have any more cables or ports that accept this but i remember that i saw a tiny by the way, it's probably already, I think it's already 100%. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it's full. So I remember that this thing that I really hate um, because it makes a lot of noise and it complains when the voltage gets low, but it has a USB and then it has a uh, 3 amp USB-C and this just plugs in right in here you know and so that's what I have to use to uh, charge my phone of course I can use that little brick but why convert electricity if you already have direct uh, thing so so that's what I've been using so yeah you need USB-C to, uh, to uh, uh, 
power that one and I remember that I bought that little adapter uh, converter it's in my car and it was too weak to um, to charge my laptop I remember that one I think also had something like this USB and USB-C I'm gonna check if that one has USB-C then we have a winner because that one is much smaller so I'll just bring it to the truck because I got a bunch of 12 volt uh, I got a bunch of 12 volt uh, like check this one I got one here one here I got uh, and I got one on one side of the sleeper and the other one on the other one side of the sleeper so they really they really built uh, Kenworth really built this truck for smokers so it's a smoking truck all right what we're doing now I thought you guys would want to see uh, the masterful piloting of the 20 year old excavator from inside the cab and we know who the master is well don't ask me to dig a ditch I have no idea how to do that I have no idea how to use five levers at the same time but driving on the trailer that's my forte right so that's what they pay me the big bucks for anyway what I'm trying to do is I, I don't remember which one I I, uh, I charged and sometimes people keep asking me about all right this one is full all right maybe let's switch it to maybe super view okay we'll keep it on super view so yeah session session five my favorite little camera but I love using this uh, this I'm recording with uh, eight I love using it as a handheld cam yeah and this one is full wow that's pretty good the only thing that happened with them uh, with age probably one is like three years old and the other one is like maybe one year old this new one still makes sounds but the older one whenever you push the button it's supposed to you know signal like now right you turn it on turn it off it's supposed to give you a, like a small alarm that one stopped doing that it's like it's there is a tiny little sound but you have to be like a like a shark to hear that and i'm not sure if sharks are Jacks are that good underwater, but anyway, so so we'll see. Uh, I noticed that this thing, uh, the tracks are not very responsive, which is often the case on old machines, you know. Basically, when you try to turn, it doesn't want to turn. So might be might be tricky loading this. All right, so we're switching to GoPro session five. 